And so let me just point out, we have never made it through an animal study successfully for this type of virus. Really? Here's one. Here's another. And another. Either she didn't really do her homework, or she's lying to you. I'll let you decide which. Hey, Dr. Wilson here. I'm a molecular and structural biologist, and I'm back to debunk some more COVID-19 misinformation. And this week, I'm going to be debunking Dr. Lee Merritt. Lee Merritt is yet another spreader of pseudoscientific misinformation that only serves to fear monger instead of empower people with proper information. She continues to spread the same misinformation that I've been debunking for months on this channel, but one of her recent interviews gained a million hits on YouTube. So clearly people are still buying this information, and as long as they're buying it, I'll be debunking it. Even without doing anything, this disease has a 99.991% chance of survival. No, no, it really doesn't. And I've seen so many COVID deniers just throwing out these 99.99 numbers without any real reference. That's because officially right now, the mortality rate of COVID is unknown. There are just way too many pieces of information that we are missing. We know that we are missing deaths. We know that we are missing cases. Unless we have a full picture of just how many cases there are and just how many deaths there are, we won't have a good answer to this. Experts think that this number will fall around 1%, but until then, we just don't know. And her telling you that it's actually 99.991% is a lie. What we do know, however, is that COVID is killing a lot of people, way in excess of what we would experience during a normal year. That is a problem. And you'd say, why would they hide treatment? Well, I can come up with two reasons. One is that um, your $69 billion vaccine industry goes to zero if you have an effective treatment for all these viral airborne diseases, right? Well, actually, pharmaceutical companies stand to make way more money by selling you drugs instead of selling you vaccines. You see, preventing a disease with a vaccine stops you from getting sick. That means you don't have to go to the hospital and get all the expensive drugs and care associated with that. If more people were getting sick, then there would be more people making big payouts in hospitals. But vaccines prevent all of that. So yeah, profits made by vaccines would go down, but the ridiculously high profits made by drugs will continue to stay high and continue to increase. If I were a diabolical world leader trying to make as much money as possible off the world's failing health, I would not invest in vaccines. Whatever this thing is, you want to tell that they're calling this Pfizer vaccine, this Moderna vaccine, this RNA thing, it doesn't prevent transmission by their own admission, okay? No, we don't say that the vaccine doesn't prevent transmission. We say we don't know if it prevents transmission yet, you know, because we go by science and science takes time. So we're still doing those studies. However, the early data that we do have right now tells us that those who get vaccinated are less likely to have the virus in their body or they carry less virus overall than those who have not been vaccinated. So when it comes to the question of do COVID vaccines prevent transmission, the expected answer is yes. But in the meantime, before we figure out exactly how that all works in the real world, we're telling you to stay on the safe side and just continue to wear a mask and socially distance. Why is this so hard for COVID deniers to understand? Viruses are all around us. They're part of nature. We lived with them for millennia. We've lived with them for a millennia, and we've suffered and died from them for a millennia. Ask anybody who remembers measles, polio, smallpox. But the other thing is you can improve your own immune system through supplements. People, the, the you know, big pharma doesn't ever want you to do that, but there's no question. I'd be interested to know if the fact that supplements are a multi-billion dollar industry every single year bothers her. Anyway, yeah, sure. If you want to take supplements and it makes you feel good, go ahead and take it. If you need to take it because you know you're deficient in something, go ahead and take it. If you want to take vitamin D to be sure that you're up on your levels, sure, go ahead and take it. But don't expect it to make you immune from COVID. That is not how this works. Well, in this case, what they've done They've made a piece of this mRNA to create in every cell of your body that spike protein. What? No. How on earth does she think that mRNA from the vaccine gets into every single cell in your body? That's not how this works. SARS-CoV-2 has an RNA genome. So even if you get naturally infected with 
SARS-CoV-2, you're going to have viral RNA in your system. What the vaccines have done is taken a piece of that RNA viral genome, the part that codes for the spike protein, and packaged it in a way that it can get into your cells, your cells can see the RNA, and make the spike protein for themselves. It will only be made by the cells that receive the mRNA, so only the cells that are around the injection site. Once your cells start making that foreign protein, your immune cells will be recruited to that area, they'll start recognizing it and chopping it up, and bring it to your lymph nodes where you'll start to develop immune memory. Meanwhile, the mRNA is going to decay over the span of a couple of hours. If getting mRNA into every single cell in the body was that easy with one injection, then gene therapy would be a lot easier and we'd have a lot more cures for genetic diseases. But we don't because that's not how this works and Lee Merritt apparently doesn't understand that. And that spike protein, you're actually creating the pathogen in your body. No, you're not creating the pathogen, you're creating the spike protein. The function of the spike protein is for the virus to recognize your own cells and gain entry into them. Once the virus gains entry into the cells, that's when it starts to cause disease with its other genes that aren't included on this piece of RNA. The spike protein is not enough to cause COVID. It is not the pathogen. Lee Merritt is making stuff up. Next, she starts talking about this phenomenon called antibody-dependent enhancement, and she implies that it's going to be a problem with COVID vaccines. And they, they after MERS, they tried it in ferrets and something else. And what happened is all the animals died. It wasn't subtle, okay? but they didn't die of the vaccine. What they died from was called immune enhancement or antibody-induced enhancement. Like so many people I've debunked before her, she misses the history of SARS vaccines. It is true that antibody-dependent enhancement is a phenomenon that was observed with some SARS coronavirus vaccines back in the 2000s. What she fails to mention is that scientists worked really hard to figure out what was causing this antibody-dependent enhancement and figure out ways to work around it. And that's exactly what they did. They actually did produce vaccines that didn't have this antibody-dependent enhancement effect. And now we know what to look for with the SARS-CoV-2 vaccines. And we've looked for it. But I'll get to that in a little bit. First, let me show you just how dishonest Lee Mayer is being. And so let me just point out, we have never made it through an animal study successfully for this type of virus. Really? Here's one. Here's another. And another. Either she didn't really do her homework, or she's lying to you. I'll let you decide which. And the longest they've really followed people after the vaccine is two months. Well, you see, that's, that's not enough time to know that we won't have that antibody enhancement problem. Well, no, participants in these clinical trials have been followed since day one. That includes people who began getting vaccinated in clinical trials back in March. This entire time, scientists have been looking for any evidence of antibody-dependent enhancement effects associated with COVID or any of its treatments. And so far, we have not seen it. If antibody-dependent enhancement was a real problem with COVID or any of its treatments, then we would have seen it already we would have seen it in the animal studies of the vaccines, but we didn't. We would have seen it in any of the millions of people who have already been vaccinated against COVID, but we haven't. And we would have seen it in any patients who are receiving convalescent plasma treatment, but again, we haven't. This vaccine was rolled out to distribution centers before they even made a show of caring about the FDA approving it. Do you realize that? I mean, it went out to for distribution. I know in Nebraska, it was in the distribution center, within days before the FDA even said they were going to approve it. Wh what? Well, no, they just stockpiled lots of batches of the vaccine before it actually got approved, so that rollout could be faster. The alternative would be to wait to produce any vaccines until approval was gained, which would mean that we'd still have to wait weeks or months after approval to get any actual batches. This was just a logistical and strategic move. You, there's no way I know exactly what that mRNA is programmed to, and neither do you and neither do most doctors. The doctors can't get at that data. That's the guys, the guys at the very top of this project, okay? They know, but we don't know. No, that information is freely available on the WHO website. Here it is. Still think she's not lying? 
Well, another week, another COVID denier debunked. Lee Merritt is no better than the rest. She lies, misinforms, and twists the truth at every step she can in order to make you afraid of vaccines. If you want to talk to me, Lee Merritt, my contact info is in the description. That's going to do it for this week. As always, the links to all of the studies and data that I've shown you in this video are linked in the description below so that you can check them out and read them for yourself. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I do hope you found this informative and don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch me next Tuesday where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.